What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another Ross Review. This week on the show, we're standing next to a 2007 Nissan Skyline 350 GT, also known as a V36, or over in North America, a later model G35 sedan. Now, these cars were incredibly popular over in North America, but unfortunately, were never sold here in Australia. Although we do currently get the latest model of this car, which translates to the Infiniti Q50. But I really feel like here in Australia, these cars are just incredibly underappreciated. And today, I want to change that. The Nissan 350 GT is a Skyline. <clears throat> well, that's at least what Nissan says. The V35 platform was introduced to Japan in 2001 and was even a bigger change to the Skyline name than the R31 to R32, and not for the better. In 2003, the V35 was the very first Skyline to be offered in North America. Branded as an Infiniti G35, the car was a hit. Performance was far from a GTR, but still decent enough for an enthusiast. The funny thing was though, that the V35 was actually much more similar to a Nissan 350Z rather than a Skyline, sharing the same platform and engine as the Z. In 2006, the car got a refresh to the V36 showing off a smoother body design. Then in 2009, the car got another upgrade following the 370Z, we got the G37 now having the 3.7 liter v6 from the z getting the picture in 2014 the q50 slash v37 was introduced and is still currently in production today just coming to the front of the 350 gt here guys i actually really do like the front end styling of this car i think it does really look sleek and nice and i especially like these headlights they've been updated from the last version and I really do like how they almost come up over the fenders here and they give it a nice look. Now just coming under the bonnet, this has a VQ35 HR engine. It's a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6 engine, pumps out 311 horsepower and 264 pound foot of torque. Now this is a five speed automatic with all wheel drive in this particular model. Most of these cars, however, you will find will only be rear wheel drive. Now there are some rare models in the sedan as well, which you could get as a six speed manual. This particular engine though, as you have a look, is being slightly modified. Uh, there's really just a few things done. You have pod filters on here, we have a strut brace, but the majority of it is just cosmetic and we also have aftermarket wheels on here. Now just bringing your attention to the side of the V36, just have a general look at it. I really like the look of this car. I think they've really made it look so much more sporty and attractive and even still to this day i think this is a beautiful looking car the v35 of previous the four-door models really didn't look very good i really thought they looked ugly and they lost the sportiness to them where these v36s nissan slash infinity did a really good job keeping that sporty feel to it now just at the back of the v36 we've got this nice spoiler you know, it's not overly aggressive, but it does give it that little bit of sporty feel. And I gotta say, I really like the rear end. I like this whole car style in general. And for a car that's 12 years old, this thing still looks really good. It really does. Now coming to the brake lights, this thing still has the traditional Skyline rear tail lights. It's got two circular brake lights in here and they really do kind of carry that tradition of the Skyline rear brake lights. And they do look really good at night. I'll show you a picture right now. Now, of course, in the middle, it says Nissan, and then under that, it says Skyline. 
I don't really like how they've called it a skyline. You know, we've got the traditional brake lights that give it that representation, but other than that, it's not a skyline. They shouldn't have called it a skyline. They should have just left it as an infinity because I think that suits the car more. Anyways, down here at the exhaust, this is an aftermarket exhaust. So just have a listen. These things sound actually really good. Alright, so just coming inside the Nissan V36 now guys, this thing is really nice inside. It is very much more upper class and you can really see that they really changed their demographic even though they still called this a Skyline. This was definitely meant for a broader audience, someone who's a little bit more sophisticated, who wants something that's more luxurious, comfortable, with still a decent amount of power, but the power is secondary. Now. The seats in this, they're very nice. You know, everything is electronically controlled, basically. Uh, they are quite bolstered as well, though not aggressively, and they are very comfortable. Um, even in here, in the interior, you know, it's just, you've got this kind of wood grain in here that looks very nice. Everything is like, you know, leather, soft touch plastic on the dash. Um, now in the console, this is some hard touch plastic here, but it looks all right, and uh, you know, it, I expect to see that. The center console here, that's nicely padded leather. You've got a small storage cubby in here, which is nice, you know, an auxiliary cable in here. Now you've got your cup holders there, which is, you know, easy, convenient. We've also got heated seats in this car. Now coming just onto the center stack here, it's very nice. There are a lot of buttons, but they're easily labeled and, you know, they're easy to get to. And I don't think it looks too cluttered. I think it looks nice. And I do really appreciate they have this sort of beautiful analog clock. And then you just come above that and we've got our screen here. So I've got our infotainment. Now this is a Japanese imported car. So these weren't sold here. So all the 350 GTs, V36s, V35s, all of them here in Australia will be Japanese models. And for that reason, a lot of the infotainment screens are in Japanese. So this particular one as well is in Japanese. Uh, so I don't really know what some of the buttons are saying here, but it is a touch screen. Um, and you do also have a control wheel here. Now just on the wheel, the wheel is fairly nice. You know, it's not aggressively sporty, but it is still a very nice wheel. You know, you've got some nice grips here, you know, some stitching in there. And you know, you've got basic settings on the wheel as well. You know, you've got cruise control, uh, you know, you can control the radio, you know, answer phones and that, which is nice. Uh, also, this is all telescopic and the gauge cluster actually moves with it. So that's a very nice touch as well. Uh, and then when you just come into the actual gauge cluster, the gauges are very nice. Uh, they are very simple, but they're very nicely lit. Uh, they're nicely colored. And then you do have a small little screen in the middle, which can do various functions, though it is in Japanese still. So it's kind of useless. Now just on the wheel again here, we've got the flappy paddles there. Now these really do feel quite substantial and very nice to press. And also with these paddles, they're actually mounted to the column, not the wheel. So when you move the wheel around, the paddles actually stay in place so you always know where your paddles are. That's how it should be, and I really like how they've done that. Now just in the back seats here, these are pretty nice back seats, I gotta give it to them. I've got a, a decent amount of room here. This is a normal seating position. Got plenty of leg room, plenty of head room. And uh, the seats are actually very comfortable back here as well. We've actually got a little lever here, which can let us even recline back or bring it forward in this, just so we can get even more comfortable, which is a really nice touch. We've also got matte pockets in both the front seats here. We've got a climate control vent back here, which is nice. Uh, and we've also got a cigarette ashtray. Now we've got window switches back here as well. These are one touch automatic, which is good to see. And then you pull down this center armrest and uh, we've got another two cup holders here. And we also have a pass through to the trunk. Now, unfortunately, due to having this lever here, uh, the seats do not fold down. You just have the pass through.
All right, guys, so driving the 2007 Nissan 350 GT or V36 or later model G35 sedan for the US guys. And, you know, just having this thing for, you know, a few hours just this morning, already, you know, I, I gotta say, you know, I really like this car. It's not a ridiculous powerhouse anymore, you know, I, I don't really agree with them calling it a Skyline, but, you know, for people in North America, where it was just called an Infiniti, I think this was a great, great car. And now when these things came out, these were, you know, reasonably affordable. You know, they were much cheaper than, you know, its competitors such as like, you know, BMW, Mercedes, and, and cars such as that. And, you know, this thing gave a lot of car for the money. Um, and it feels nice in here. You know, it drives nice, it's comfortable, everything is nice. You know, it's leather, you got this lovely wood in here. I love the analog clock, I really do. If you just leave this in drive, let it do its thing, this thing actually drives, you know, really comfortably, doesn't seem to mess about much, and i am got to say, this, this is a nice, nice car. Now just pull on the highway, let's see how these flappy paddles give it. <laughs> oh boy <laughs> yeah you gotta slow down Jesus man for a sedan I gotta give it to it you know just for being you know 311 horsepower you know that's reasonable power but for a, for a bigger sedan like this you know it actually gets up and moves pretty damn well and uh, the the paddles here are really satisfying to hit they are um, quite substantially large and uh, they have a really good weight to them. And, and they're very responsive. You know, as soon as I hit that paddle, this thing goes up a gear and it's gone. The steering as well, it just, it's just a hydraulic steering, I believe, and it's got a really lovely weight to it. This thing just uh, has the right amount of weight to it, and when you go around a corner, just it is that satisfying feel. I think this car is really underappreciated here, and I know it's because it's an import, and you know people are worried about a lot of things about it. But this is a well-made car. It's a beautiful car, and you get a lot of car for the money that these cost. Uh, if you go on car sales and that now and have a look. You know, generally, to pick up one of these, you look at around the 15, 20K mark, and that's for really good examples as well. This thing is just, I, I don't know. It's definitely not as much of an enthusiast car as, you know, an F6 or XR8 or, you know, a Holden. But this thing is a fun car, and it gives me that almost European feel, even though that this is a Japanese import. And I gotta say, you know, this, this thing is very nice to drive, and really does feel like a high-end car. I'm gonna finish the video off here now, guys. Huge thanks goes to Lee Young Automotive Group once again for hooking me up with this Nissan 350GT, V36, or G35 sedan over in North America. This is actually for sale there, so I will leave a link in the description below. Please check it out. This thing is a beautiful car, and uh, there are not many examples like this for sale in Australia. So I really hope you learned something today, and I hope you liked the video. Please hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you're new here. We'll see you on the next video.